Hey everybody, welcome back to IT Security Labs. And today we're going to be completing Reel 2. This is a retired machine on Hack the Box. And people say this is going to teach us some Active Directory enumeration and also privilege escalation. So if you're interested in learning Active Directory and how to attack it, this is going to be the machine for us. I'm going for the OFSEC OSEP exam and people suggest this machine. So let's go ahead and see what we can find. I went ahead and made a folder in my Kali called Real 2 Now I can run Nmap. So I'll reuse the same Nmap scan that you have probably seen me do on this channel many times. But this time we just want our IP address for Real 2 So we'll just do that. Uh, OA. This is make sure that this will make sure that I have my results in a file, especially if I need to come back. So VV is also making sure that I can see the ports as this thing runs. And I see 443. 80, 80, and 80. So we have web server running, or at least two or one running on all these ports. Let's see if we have a uh, view host or something. We also have this port 6002, uh, 6006. I haven't seen these 6000 range ports in a while. So that's going to be interesting. So for starters, let me add this to my Etsy host because that's, that seems to be the, the game. Nano slash Etsy host. That worked. So let's put our IP address here. Real two dot hack the box. We'll probably need to add more here, but for now, let's just add that. Save it. Now let's go to our browser and visit those ports that we saw. So we saw on 80. And let's also go to 443. HTTPS real2.hdb okay this one wants us to accept the risk okay so we see the default iss page let's also check 8080 all right so these are the three web ports usually websites are usually they are the easiest way to get in so initial access through web ports so this one is denying us we'll probably move on to this uh, HTTPS is usually preferred, so we will put most of our effort in the HTTPS section. If it doesn't work, then we'll go back to HTTP. 8080 seems to be running something completely different. It's asking us to log in, uh, meet new friends, and stay connected with your family, with who you are interested in anytime, anywhere, social media. So this is a good way for OSINT to maybe gather some information about what this is. Don't have account? Sign up here for free. So social media is always good. So an internal directory will be good. IT security lab. So we're going to create here. IT security lab at IT security lab dot com. Password IT security lab. Confirm IT security lab. Mail create account. Done. Okay. We don't want to save this, but we're in. So this is an internal social media site. If it is, I already see Cube and Cube X0. These look like two different people. And this one is a Linux sign. So this might be the admins. Let's see if we can interrogate this. See all nodes. I don't have any nodes. I just joined. But can I create a node? New node. I am a... All right, let's see if they will see me. There we go. This will get their attention. Okay, so in these notes, we can also try to do maybe injections, but for starters, let's check all the posts. Summer is so hot from SV Samson and Cube also posted enjoying Fika. So there's only two. Summer is all so hot in this 2020 here. So we're going to try as Van brute forcing. If we see ever see a page, maybe summer 2020 because it says summer is so hot. The other one was from Cube. Enjoying Fika with Egress 55. Is that another Egress 55? That's also from 2020, whatever this Fika is, so we can try to brute force. But summer looks interesting. 
uh, can we find all the users? So here they are under pages. So everybody with a page. So this is cube XO XO. Is there anything there? The expo. So this might be cube. So let's create a username list here. Uh, usernames ini dot text. I'm using an init initial because I need to generate them different differently. Right now, I'm probably going to find usernames that might not be valid. But for now, let's see if we can collect these. So this is one we are interested in. It, it looks like there's just a few. So you can automate this or we can just get the, them this way. So this is cube. So far, we haven't seen a real name except for that S van. Do they have a full name here? Okay. Yeah. Okay. So here's the final list. I know I probably did this the hard way, but I went and um, found everybody. <laughs> so Cube, SV Espresso, Jenny. I even have Teresa there. So everybody is there. So if you look, the name first, it looks like the first name is up here. Then their last name is in the. That's their actual at. So, class, Sven, Sven, Sven. So, look, I, I thought that was the syntax. Anyway, so I have usernames and stuff, but I don't know where to use them. I can try to sign into this and try to exploit it as well as one of these people. For example, S. Swenson. Maybe we should sign out and come back in as this person with Summers 2020. Because those might be the usernames as well. So we can search for people, which it might give us more. But let's log out and paste it as that. Summer 2020, capital S. Uh, log in. A lowercase s. Summer 2020. Nothing. Okay, and they're counting our login attempts. So let's not get ourselves locked out. So maybe. Let's run a uh, Durbust on this. So I'll save these as usernames.txt for now. But I don't like to just jump into brute forcing. So instead of just jumping, yes, this is a win Windows machine. So HTTPS is going to be interesting. We can also run Durb on this one, but let's do it one at a time. And HTTPS, like I said earlier, is usually a good target. So we'll run that against this HTTPS site. Okay, I see the client. Auto deploy. This will be interesting. Let's also get GoBuster ready while Derb is running. GoBuster is going. We actually didn't get a chance to look at all of our NMAP results. We just jumped into the few ports. So let's get a full lay of the land here. 80, which we saw. 443, we saw. We should also be able to see the DNS name. So real.hdb.local. We need to add this to our Etsy host. Oh, I also see it's seeing EWS exchange. So there must be an OWA as well. Etsy host. Let's modify this and say also go to real2.hdb.local. Save that. So now this is our final Etsy host file. Just make sure that we have the correct domain. So with that in mind, I see a slash OWA. So this, this is running Exchange and I see RPC here. So let's go check out our OWA slash OWA on HTTPS. OWA is the online login for email. Uh, the local slash o w a there we go advanced accept risk and there it is so we need to, to try to brute force this and like we found out from here this Svensson person is the person that we want to try we tried over the other way and we said uh, summer 2020 was that was a hint from our ctf i put lowercase this time 
Let's put summer 2020 capital. So I do this a couple of times and it doesn't work. Oh, they said a domain and username. So heck the box. I've been putting it incorrectly. Let's try summer 2020. There's a way we can brute force this as well. Actually, I should use that too. So let's do something better here. Password spraying OWA. There has to be a two out there for password spraying uh, OWA. All right. Password spraying is a form of password brute force attack. In password spraying, an attacker with the help of a tool cycles through a list of possible usernames found using OSINT techniques, which we already have. In comparison to traditional brute force where I selected username, but here we want to use this. So do I have ruler? Let's try password spray exchange 2016 offensive.local using ruler. Let's check first if I have ruler. Okay. So we are going to need to install ruler on Kali. A tool to abuse exchange services. That looks good. They will tell us how to install it. Here's our getting started guide. Exchange 2003. Although all of the exchanges then. So you need to go set up or run build a project from source. The easiest way to get up and running is using go get. To get it go through go, make sure you have the modules. Okay, I have go. So let's go and build it from scratch. So git clone ruler. All right. One more time. Go, go, you know, uh, go mod file, not in the current directory. Go get is not supported in the module to build. Let's go to ruler. Okay, so go get, get that. So we did that. Okay. This is the easiest way to get started. Okay, let's do this. All right, so it looks like we have a ruler. We need to run it in, in Go though, okay? I have a feeling I'll be using ruler in the future, so it's worth spending some a little bit more time getting it to work. I'm running one command at a time to make sure that it actually works. All right. Now we just need a go build. Is it a dot? Let's say build from here. Usernames in it dot text, but these usernames here are not actually good. So let's make sure that we generate them properly. Let's find out a uh, usernames, usernames generator. Let's see if we can find a tool already on Kali. Oh, okay. There's a bash script. If you have full name, use an, a names, and then you can use username to py script to generate possible usernames. That's what we have. Okay, so we're going to get this script and see if we can generate some usernames. Otherwise, we could have written our own, but hey, why? Why do that? So we're going to come here and say, hey, that we get, can you borrow us this script from the internet mesh.py well, i guess it's called name mesh.py forget it python 3 name mesh.py you say name mesh.py usernames.txt so it's usernames you need to okay let's see all right it generated a few names that's good so we had first names and last names it really just went and tried to see. All right, so let's save these as usernames.py. Usernames.txt. Okay. Then let's um, nano passwords.txt. So far, we have summer uh, 2020. Summer uh, 2020. Summer. Uh, 
2020 with an exclamation mark. Summer 2020 with two exclamation marks. No, with one exclamation mark. I mean, this is just to try. We can try more later. But that's what we have. Then, remember, we have to use go ruler. Go run ruler.go. So we need to go to the ruler folder. If we do that, this will run ruler. So we need to formulate a command with ruler. So we need to brute force. So there should be a brute force option somewhere. Okay, so here's this e synt. Okay, so go run ruler.go for the domain uh, real2.htb. We can put it local there, but it's going the same way. Uh, brute force, usernames.txt, password.txt. So let's see if we can run it in brute force. So ruler is our two was this we went this path because we found OWA. We could have used other tools, but this tool seems to be targeted towards OWA. So that's why we're using it. Let's give it a second and when it's done, we'll come and check. Wait a second. Uh, input file not found. What you didn't find the usernames.txt? Oh come on. What did I call it? Oh, I'm in a different folder, so I need to go one back. I'm like, I know I created these. What are you talking about? There. It's brute forcing. And we won't get logged out because we're only trying a couple of times. I mean, a few times. So this is going to be good. So you're trying summer 2020 against everybody. Both summer 2020s. All right, looks like we have success on S. Svesen, Summer 2020 Capital. All right, I'm, let's, let's stop it here. I don't think anyone else is going to work. Because this is the only person who mentioned it. So this is our password. Kind of to be expected, but there was no way we could have, I mean, we could have tried to guess the password. I mean, the username. But for now, let's go and give them that in our Outlook web app. And here we have to say slash, no, it's hack the box slash it's s dash dot. So we were trying the uh, wrong name. Summer 2020. I hope I have everything spelled out correctly. It's thinking about it. So that's good. And I followed this right here, if you're curious. So getting share via Malaysia through email. So we, we might actually want to keep following this here if this works. And we are in. This is awesome. The, it's in a different language. Not sure what language that is. We probably can change it somewhere. But here's an address book with everybody that we should know about. And we have an administrator. So I should be able to email everybody. I don't know what is, this is saying, but should I just do that to see if i can create an email i don't know let's find out but i want to send everybody an email so this is going to be email phishing email with an exclamation mark hello click here then give them my ip http or maybe smb remember in a few a few weeks ago we saw that people if, People, when they clicked an SMB share in Outlook, it reached out to the attacker and they can use the responder. Uh, th this was a thing a few weeks ago, say Outlook 2023. It was a thing. I tried it in my lab. Outlook leaks credentials. Yeah, this is from March. So we can, if any of these people are clicking emails, they will try to authenticate it to our SMB, something like that. So. I don't have time to show you, but as you can see, March 2023, which is around the time when I worked on this video. So if I have access to people's email, uh, is it something like that? 10.10.14.3, pointing to my IP, a PA, 10.10.14.2.
Then I just need to make sure that this SMB is correct. Otherwise, we can also craft a malicious JavaScript uh, based application and hopefully it works or try SP. But for now, I see that we have everybody. Um, a new tab with responder. Responder minus I. This is going to be on turn one. So respond to certain SMB share. And if any of them clicks, it will try to reach back to me. But I just need to make sure that my SMB is correct. Uh, this is SMB. Let's also say HTTP. Because responder starts HTTP as well. And HTTP, just in case, 192.10.10.14.2. Let's send the email. So I found out that this is Swedish based on the characters here, Google them. So if this email is actually sent, responder is listening. If anyone comes in, so as you can see, I said HTTP, HTTPS also, and SMB. So one of them <laughs> should be clicked <laughs> if somebody's clicking emails. Okay, I got an undeliverable, which tells me that somebody tried to deliver my email. And here's who said things were undeliverable. Okay, but some of them have to be valid, right? Because they were in my address book. So respond, I'll wait here. Okay, so I waited for a little bit and I didn't get anything. So let's try it again. Let's put a test. And HTTP 10.0.0. 10.10.14.2. That's my Kali. SMB 10.10.14.2. I don't know which one they're going to click. And I don't know which one is going to give me the credit. So let's send. Then go back here and wait. Okay, so right here, it looks like I lost audio that I was recording, but I was still struggling trying to figure out what was happening, and I got that message there. So I'm actually doing a voice voiceover for the first time here, and I was checking to see if the emails worked and if there was anything in the mailbox, but checking responder showed me that we actually captured an NTLMA hash there. So what we need to do is capture that, save it in our Kali Linux machine as a file called hashes.txt. But I need to make sure that that's put inside of my Hack the Box real machine. So we'll go ahead and say hashes.txt, nano, is our tool of choice. And then paste it there. Verify that this format is actually correctly done. Then make sure you save. And then from here, we need to use Hashcat so we can go and look up Hashcat syntax on how to properly crack NTLM v2 hashes. So we always have to Google. And once we find out what the f syntax is, we can use that with our case. We found this article here that shows us something similar to what we already did, which is kind of cool. And it also shows us how to set up the lab. But in this case, we already have our hash. So we don't need to set up the lab. We just need to borrow the hash cat. It's minus A0, M500 in the file. Then we need to point to roku.txt. So we like to check that syntax, make sure that everything works. And then go back to Kali. And as you can see, autocomplete remembers that I've already done this, so I'm too lazy. I'll go and reuse that, change the hash to just be hash.txt, and then run it. This doesn't too, take too long, and we see that the password is now called kittycat1. So we'll copy that password, save it somewhere safe. And with that password, we now need to see if we can sign in as k Svezon. They changed from s Svezon to k Svezon. So that's something to uh, think about here. 
we can try if winner am check to see if the ports are open but unfortunately as you can see i did not run a full port scan so we assume if winner am should work okay so if winner am didn't work so we ended up going with powershell so i loaded powershell and found out that we can use the session command so i said session is equals to and appears session as you can see i have the ip address and the credentials for case person and then once you hit enter ps session we should be in a session on the system as that user and now we can try to run the commands get your id you notice that it's failing so this was really bad and we're like what's happening here this is when i learned quickly that this was powershell in constrained mode you can see i was actually confused like what what's what's happening i'm running legitimate commands and i started second guessing myself for a second and then it hit me this is powershell constraint mode so i need to do some research on how to properly run command in a constrained mode powershell so we need to check to see if this is real and also how we can escape it so that's another part of that so i'm going back to google and I'm looking for PowerShell constrained mode. Because that's what I remembered very quickly after this. So in Google is like, hey, uh, yeah, you can find what PowerShell constrained mode is by running execution context command. So we copy that, come back. This should say that we are in restricted constrained mode. As you can see, it's full constrained mode. <laughs> so that's not good i should have ran get command here but didn't occur to me however there is an escape route that i after searching around i found i also have some notes as you can see from my offsec that contains powershell stuff so i found a way around that and i'll show you right now so it turns out if you put an end and all those uh curly brackets you can actually run commands so right here i'm about to download netcat 64 to this machine so i can get a stable shell so as you can see i'm going to locate netcat 64 on my machine first so i need to host that netcat file on my kali and here we go can't type So I need to copy from lab one that netcat 64 to here. I actually don't need to copy it, but I like to work with a clean copy. I could have just hosted my Python 3 shell in the lab one folder, but no, I like to move my binaries around. So I usually have multiple copies of the same thing. Then I host my Python simple HTTP server. Now coming back here, I can run wget inside of the end command and the curly bracket. If I do a, a dir like that, notice that my netcat64 is there. I tried the CLM bypass. It didn't work, so I removed it out of this video, but I would have shown you. I spent way too much time on that. Then here I'm going to listen on 8080, and then I'm going to tell netcat to reach out to me. And this time I wanted to give me cmd.exe because I don't trust PowerShell at this point. I found out that PowerShell would still work, but right now I want another shell using netcat. Hopefully this one will not be as constrained. And once I run it, I get a shell and I can actually run real commands here. So get your ID. Okay, it's actually not a real command but who am i is so we run who am i and we are happy now that we can run the commands next is privilege escalation what can we find here that will give us the real permissions was who am i slash or does not show me anything i'm not an administrator i do not have set impersonate so this is not ideal i don't like where we are right now we can put win peace here but I like to start by just looking around. When you say dir, you notice that gear test account p 
PSRC and JTest PSSC. To open those, we use type. That's equivalent of cat in win Windows. And I don't like to type all that stuff because I'm talking at the same time, so I copy and paste. And then you should be able to see that this is a script that is setting up some aliases. It looks like at the top there. Then it's setting up computer name and a directory called D. I mean, a, a mounted drive. And this looks like it's giving this user the permission to get files and it was written by cube zero zero and i wanted to move on here and open the next one to see if we can identify anything else i also spent some time looking for keywords like passwords but i didn't find anything so let's check the second one so i'm looking for a password that is set in plain text or anything that is doing especially if it's running as a root so you also want to check see if this these things are running and here it looks like it's calling for configuration data in its script of ps1 and the language mode if you look there it's really constrained there's no language mode uh, so even if we get a shell as this user won't be able to do anything so i was tempted i was like wow how about I try to see if that file exists, the init script.ps1, init script2, because it's running as that GIA test account. So I was hopeful that that file would exist. And as you can see here, if I go to it in a second, if I can copy and paste properly, it doesn't exist. <laughs> so I was motivated to go and check by hand i thought maybe something that i'm doing so there sure enough it doesn't exist so that's not cool we now need to see uh what we can do there's zamp which we didn't check we should also check zamp for any clear test passwords but right now we're on this rabbit hole about that those scripts so i was tempted to make a directory called config data and that's what I'm doing right now. Let's make a directory called config data. Maybe let's put a script called init script.ps1 in there and see if things work. And creating config data didn't help me, but I actually will use that later in, in the video. So for now, I'll save you some time and we'll move on to the actual export. After about 30 minutes, I decided, hey, how about I just search recursively throughout the whole system? for GIA test account any files that contain that person since we have a script for that person maybe we have logs or we have something so i tried to run some powershell commands that i had found online and they were able to find something like that like in the current location but i was like hey how about i just start from c directory very bad idea because this takes forever and i did not account for the permissions denied errors so this is going to be like giving me a bunch of errors and ultimately during this search which took about 20 minutes or so i found a note so somewhere in this mess i, I was trying to scroll up and down it's a very long 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 uh, command i found a note and I'll show you its location here and also what it had. So my fa my command found C users case based on updater roaming sticky notes. Inside of sticky notes, we have logs. And in actually, I went to the wrong place. It was supposed to be local sto storage. So let's go to local storage. But Windows needs you to escape the characters forgot that by this time i was an hour in trying to get this machine to work and it wasn't so i wasn't thinking straight here then of course remember that in windows you need to account for the caps then there uh, if you go to inside of level db you will notice that there is a file 0003.log if you open that file it will look like a bunch of gibberish was it's a hex file so we need to make sure that it's formatted correctly but watch what happens when you try to open it 
and that's what you see so we need to format it in hex and we can look it up how to do that or i'll just show you the final command okay now if we do it there and open it again this time we're going to pipe it so that it can be formatted in proper hex so we can see it would have been easier to bring this file to my Kali and do this but by this time i was not having it format hex if you look in here scroll up a little bit you will notice that we do have a password when this is happening so we says credentials that was a big giveaway right there and we saw that that's the name of the account and from a all the way to hash one right there that's our password so we are going to try to sign back in as this user hopefully with their credit credentials so we need to save those in a file okay so now here's a few commands pastables to enter a powershell session as that user so let's launch a new powershell instance and i could not remember it's pwsh and then once we enter i just pasted everything make sure that we just get in and we should be in a new session as the new user but this session is even worse than the session that we had earlier this one we cannot even run a thing in fact if you try what we were doing earlier it doesn't even work watch, watch what happens when i try to run dir with the same syntax so this was really really brutal but by this time i learned that the get command option will give me the actual commands that i can run and i've check file clear host exit ps session get command get formula i mean uh, format data and all those but none of those really is inter that interesting check file is like a cat or type so that's the command that we we'll like to use and earlier in our script we found out that check file will check for files inside of d directory and it's okay to me that instead of checking files inside of d the mounted share what if i created a system link on the system to see if we can check a file or get the files that are under administrator so that's what i ended up doing and here I'm trying to run check file and this is not going to work obviously because of syntax. But we need to create a system link or is the, I've done this in Linux but not in Windows of the administrator's home directory or the whole folder and that should work. But now we're trying to just check C. Notice that check file didn't fail. So check file is a command. I didn't specify a real file c is just a directory so that was not going to help and tried to check users and then uh that case phase on but that didn't work because it only checks for real existing files so let's create a system link here because this is not going to actually check for a real file and then we can so like i said uh it's going to check c program data so i put c program data and then I just named a folder called admin. This is where I wanted to create my system link because I already created system uh, program data in under C. So I can come here and just run that. That's a full command and it fails. So new item, sim link path, C program data. And I wanted to see users administrator and I knew it's on the desktop. So what does it need like system link? So let's edit as a junction folder which is the same concept so try that i want to mount the administrator's desktop and it fails so it's complaining about something then we need to go back and see i even tried it in the very limited shell because i was desperate i was like is it in the wrong place but that did not work so we need to go back and modify the path so now coming back this time I'm just going for the actual administrator desktop. So that still fails. So let's change and remove the desktop altogether. 
And by this time, my brain is thinking, what is wrong with this? Maybe this is not the correct path, but I need to change one more thing. Just in case I cannot share the desktop, why not just remove the desktop and mount the whole administrator path? And that's what I'm doing there. Definitely hacking is not as easy as it looks. And this time, after a little bit of persistence, it works. I was amazed. So now there's a sim link in C program data admin. And I just had to go there and check it out myself. As far as on, I can see that it's there. But if I try to get into the admin and list the files, it says permission is denied, unauthorized access. So I know that it's sitting in the right place. So now let's use the correct session. This time, this is the other account session. And since we can check any files that's in that specific folder, according to our script, we are just going to go ahead and check that file, give it the new path. And it, this time we're going to go straight to the administrator's desktop and we should see the flag. So very, very interesting way of attacking. And I found this machine to be very satisfying to finish. That's why... Instead of re-recording the video, after all this pain, I decided, how about I just give you the voiceover and also explain myself a little bit because probably helpful because I was very tired when I was done with this. So this is how it should be. After working all this hard, I definitely needed to submit my flag and of course ask you to please subscribe to my channel if you haven't. It means a lot when you do. These videos are really fun to make, but also take a while. And if you subscribe and like this video, it means a lot to me. So thank you very much for watching and see you next time.